It's time now for Mark Meets, in which I speak to the biggest names in the world of politics, entertainment, business and sport. And I also speak to people who simply have a big story to tell. And tonight's is a very big story indeed. And it doesn't get worse than the famous post office postmaster scandal, one of the great miscarriages of justice in recent times. Between 2000 and 2014, the post office prosecuted 736 sub-postmasters and sub-postmistresses, an average of one a week, based on information from a recently installed computer system called Horizon. Some went to prison following convictions for false accounting and theft. Many were financially ruined and have described being shunned by their communities. Some have since died. After 20 years, campaigners won a legal battle to have their cases reconsidered after claiming that the computer system was flawed. Many former postmasters and postmistresses have described how the saga ruined their lives. They had to cope with the long-term impact of a criminal conviction and imprisonment, some at a time when they'd been pregnant or had young children. Marriages broke down and courts have heard how some families believe the stress led to health conditions, addiction and premature deaths. In December 2019, at the end of a long-running series of civil cases, the post office agreed to settle with 555 claimants. It accepted it had previously got things wrong in its dealings with the number of postmasters and agreed to pay £58 million in damages. The claimants received a share of £12 million after legal fees were paid. Well, joining me now is Nick Wallace, an award-winning freelance journalist and broadcaster, who has been pursuing this story since 2010 when he met a taxi driver who told him his pregnant wife had been sent to prison for a crime she did not commit. Since then, he has recorded interviews with dozens of victims, insiders and experts, uncovering hundreds of documents to build up an unparalleled understanding of the story. And what a story it is. It reads like a thriller. The book is called The Great Post Office Scandal, it's winning rave reviews, the definitive account of the scandal from the journalist who pursued every twist and turn, says Michelle Hussein from the BBC. Also with us tonight is Seema Misra, who was pregnant with her second child when she was convicted of theft and sent to jail in 2010. She says that she's been suffering for 15 years as a result of this devastating saga. Seema and Nick, welcome to the show. And Seema, thank you so much for taking the time to join us and also having the courage to revisit this most horrific tale. True. It's nearly done, but mm. still hanging on, still going on anyway. Yeah. Um, when did things go wrong? Well, in my case, from the very first day when I took mm. over the post office, but they've been denying, they've been denying and saying that you're the only one. Mm. You know, we're having so many other post office, they're doing fine. You're the only one. From the only one to thousand, nearly thousand now. Yeah. Correct, and the truth is out. Uh, did you notice anything strange about the software when you opened your business or when you took over? Not to start with, because I was, I was being told it will get sorted out, you'll mm. get error notice and all that. But like sometime down the line, I did ask for it, mm. and they just like ignored. So when was the first moment that you, you realised there would be action against you? Did Thank you get a letter, a call? What happened? Yeah, well, they, uh, when the uh, auditor came in, I've been mm. asking for the help for such a long time, but after a couple of years when they came, and I told them there will be a shortfall. And I told them, like, it will be sorted out. Why post office, you know, that they will find out I haven't, I haven't taken a single penny. Yeah. Forget about 75,000. I haven't taken a single penny. And so you flagged up that there were issues. Yeah, I did. I've asked, been asking for help. I've been asking for right. help. And you said there will be a shortfall. Can you yes. please come and help? And after two years, they did. They did, yeah. And they reassured you there was nothing to worry about. No, they said, like, I thought it would be fine. And mm. then after, uh, they took the post office away in January. And then in December, I've been summoned to court. So, so you, you, lost your, you lost your business? Everything. Everything. And tell me about those months when you were waiting for court. You, you, were you working? What did you do? Uh, nothing. I wasn't working, so business was gone. But I was still believing. I'm a like, very God-fearing person. I was thinking, mm. like, it will be all fine. Yeah. I haven't done anything wrong. Nothing wrong with, happened with me. Till the last minute. Yeah. Till the last minute, I was thinking, it will be all OK. Yes. And did you have good legal advice whilst you were preparing for the court case? My very first barrister, he said to me, plead guilty, mm. then you will less a sentence. 
And, That's crazy. And then I said, why should I plead guilty for the crime which I haven't done it? Yeah. I said, no, 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 say so you're fighting in the post office. I said, no, I don't want to plead guilty. I want to, you know, I, I, I won't live, I won't be able to live with the lie. So I pleaded uh, not did guilty. Did the barrister believe that you were innocent? First one, I don't know, because he was asking me to play, be guilty. But the second one, then, you know, I changed my solicitors and everything. Mm. But then it was just like, and, it was and good, really good. this second solicitor, yes. you know, believed your story yes. and, and supported you. Oh, yeah, definitely, big time. And, I mean, roughly how long was that court case? How long was the trial? It was keep on adjourning every time because the post office was not giving the documents on time and all that. It was delaying because of them and it dragged on for nearly well, a year and a half. Do you think that was incompetence or strategic? Because they were hiding. They mm. were hiding because now we know they knew well, while my trial was going on, there's issue, but they covered it up. Mm. So how long roughly was that court case? Can you remember how, how, how long it ran? Yeah, nearly, but nearly just on two years. Just and to... can you just tell me what life was like? I mean, in just living in a courtroom for two years. It was just till 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 last minute, Mark. I was thinking it will be all fine. I never mm. thought I would go to the prison mm. because why would I? Yeah, and you I didn't. You wrong. didn't believe it would go to court, no. and then you didn't believe it would I, end in a prison. Prison, yes. Yeah. You will be acquitted. That's it. I think like everybody can. Anybody can see. I haven't done anything wrong. Nothing wrong. And, and were your team confident of victory? Uh, if I was confident of victory as well. I think it will be all fine. They asked me to bring the bags. I never did. I said, why would I bring my bags? Because I'll be coming back home. It's, it was my son's 10th birthday. I said, we'll come home, we'll celebrate in the evening. I didn't even take a single bag, I took nothing at all. I said, I, I'll be coming back home. And the next day you went into, into jail? Yeah, well, uh, when the judge gave me the sentence, I was shocked. I don't know what happened after that. When I opened my eyes... So you heard the word guilty? The guilty came two weeks beforehand. OK. So the sentencing was on 11th, oh, yeah. of, 11th of November. Did you know there would be a sentence or did you hope you could still walk free? I don't know if you walk free. They probably, you know, like, I don't know. I never even Suspended thought of sentence. Suspended sentence or Could something. be anything. I feel like it would probably be anything, you know. It won't be a, it won't be a prison sentence. Tell me about the first, that first moment, hearing the word guilty, knowing that you were not guilty. What were your emotions at that point? That time I was thinking, you know, like the... I had a faith in jury. I thought, like, did they even understood the case? Mm. How can they say? How can they say there's a black and white things here? Like, you know, they've been... The case been adjourned every time because of the post office not giving the mm. documents on time and all that. How did they even understood the case? And then I thought, OK, it's fine. You know, judge knows it. It will be fine. It will be fine. And then you get a custodial sentence. And how long were you in jail for? Just under four months. And tell me about that time. I never thought I'm going to come out alive from there. <laughs> and I was so worried about my... I was pregnant. You know, if I wouldn't been pregnant, I would have definitely would have killed myself because that is like going to the prison... It is so, you know, like, I'm not saying anything, but, like, for me, I think uh, that's really, really wrong yeah. for me. I was like, oh, I, should, I shouldn't have been there. Mm -hmm. I was so ashamed of myself. You know, I, I brought a bad name to my family and all that, or, you know, for my elder son and every, everybody. How, how are they going to face the word? Mm. You know, that and you, you knew know, you were innocent, innocent, but winding up in prison makes you seem guilty to the outside world. Yeah. Did your family and friends continue to support you? My family, yeah, definitely, yeah. Did you lose any friends? Some friends. We mm. lost some friends, but we made some proper good friends as well. Yeah, and you've Nick got Wallace. one next to you. Yes, <laughs> next to me. Uh, Nick Wallace, you've written the great post office scandal. Uh, if only it was a work of fiction because it's a page turner. But it's not. And you you came across this story in 2010. Yeah. How, how did that happen? Through, through Seema's husband. I was Amazing. working in a BBC local radio station and uh, we got a tweet from uh, Seema's husband's company, Surrey Cars, saying, can I bid for the BBC Surrey taxi account? And, of course, we were such a tiny station, we didn't have a taxi account. If we did, I would have just forwarded the tweet to management. Yeah. And so I said something flippant like, oh, well, will you come on air and tell us some, some of your great stories? Right. And he said, oh, I've got a story to tell you. Give me a call. So after the show, I, I gave Devinder a call. This was while Seema was in prison, and, you know, he, the, the poor guy was in bits. He was sort of... We spoke for 40 minutes, he was crying, he was in a desperate, desperate way. Um, but he, he was absolutely adamant that his wife had been thrown in prison for a crime she didn't commit 
and it was down to a dodgy computer system at the post office where she worked. So I went to see him, did an interview with him. His story was very, very similar. And the story was already in the public domain. In a very small way, Computer Weekly had done an investigation a year previously. And there was a campaigning group called the Justice for Sub-Postmasters Alliance. So Davinda was saying, look, it's not just me. There is a campaigning organisation. This is happening all around the country. And I, the BBC hadn't done anything on it. So I took it to my boss and two or three months later we put out an investigation and that was the first time it had been on broadcast media. Amazing journalism. Well, it was, it was, it was just a cracking story. I mean, what, if Davinda was telling the truth, we were looking at a very, very serious miscarriage of justice. And then the more I found out about it, the more I realised we were looking at potentially a very serious miscarriage of justice on an industrial scale. And it was only in 2019 when the High Court sided with the postmasters after they'd fought for years to get it to the point where they could even get the funding to take it to the High Court that suddenly the whole egg was cracked open and, and, and the, the house of cards fell over. The post office was showing up for what they were and it ended up with Seamus conviction being quashed earlier this year. Do you think if it wasn't for that chance encounter that actually this injustice would have prevailed? I mean, it's hard to say. Certainly, I wouldn't have been involved in the story in the same way. Um, it might have taken longer. It might never have happened. I mean, Alan Bates, who set up the Justice for Sub-Postmasters Alliance, is a dogged campaigner, and he managed to get uh, parliamentarians, MPs from representing various different sub-postmasters all around the country behind him. And it was them that initially forced the post office back in 2013 to uh, do a proper investigation into their IT system. But then when the investigators, a company called Second Sight, actually looked into this and told the post office, you have a problem with your computer system, the post office went into cover-up mode. They shut them down, they sacked their investigators and they denied there had been any miscarriages of justice for six years. And it wasn't, again, until that high court case cracked it open. So there's not just the scandal of these erroneous prosecutions, as you said, one a week for 14 years, but it was the cover-up that then followed, which delayed and denied justice to hundreds of people. That is scandalous. No one has been censured or held to account for it. So the post office thought they could essentially bully people out of justice. Yeah, with, with, with their money and proximity to power. They are the oldest secular state agency in the world. And a trusted brand. Like, yeah, absolutely. Like, like and the they, which they played on to their, you know, to, to, to basically say, well, how could we? have done something this bad. We don't do that. We're the mm. post office. We're the cuddly post office. But in behind the scenes, they were aggressively pursuing this fiction. There was nothing wrong with their computer system because they'd bet the farm on it. Mm. If they admitted that some of these prosecutions were potentially unsafe, the whole thing would unravel, which it now eventually has. But they were just relying on the fact that they could completely outgun these sub-postmasters all the way through and bully them out of their case. And they very nearly did so. Had it not been for a superb judge and a superb legal team who saw the post office's arguments for the fallacy that they were mm. in this high court case in 2019, the truth might never have come But back. was this approach from the post office, in your judgment, your journalistic judgment, was it sort of systemic? Was it institutional? Or was it just a handful of individuals that made a very bad call? It, it was systemic and institutional. And I bet you, if you go to the post office now, there will be people saying, oh, they've got off on a technicality. The culture of the post office was that we can do no wrong. We are the guardians of public money. These sub-postmasters, wow, they're all a bit dodgy. <laughs> they're all a bit tempted by all this cash that we put in their, you know, in, their, in their branches, which they might be tempted to use to prop up their failing businesses. That culture hasn't changed. No, no matter how much the post office senior management well, tries to pretend it has. What raises my eyebrows is, is how many corrupt postmasters there would be. I mean, it just it belies reality. Of course. It? It, even, right, you if have it's to be... an isolated be. case, there's a, there's a bad <laughs> apple in every barrel, right? See, Seema was a model citizen. She's got commendations from the police that she did when she used to work for Bedfordshire Police. Yeah. She has to work... You know, anyone who becomes a sub-postmaster has to go through a rigorous selection process. You cannot get there unless you are, are well, spotless. Well, it, it's a trustworthy position, so yeah. you would have yeah. to demonstrate trust. So why you? were all these people suddenly turning to crime? It beggars belief. But that yeah. is the institutional belief that the post office mm. had. And what about this software, Horizon software? I mean, is that at the heart of the problem? Yeah, it never worked. Right. In the mid-90s, a decision was take, taken to automate the post office. So a PFI project was set up, which was rolled out into the post office estate. 20,000 post offices. It was described at the time as the largest single non-military IT system in Europe. It was made by Fujitsu and it didn't work. It, 
it was fundamentally broken. It, they could not get it to a point where it functioned properly, and yet it was signed off because, again, they'd spent too much money, the government had spent too much money on, on potentially letting it fail. So this shonky system was just rolled out mm. and let loose on these poor sub-postmasters. And sub-postmasters, under the terms of their contract, are required to make good any discrepancies in their accounts. The Horizon computer system was throwing up phantom discrepancies, which SEMA was suffering from. And I've spoken to so many people who start to doubt their own sanity because they are looking at a computer system that cannot add up properly yeah. and they're being held liable for serious amounts of money, £74,000 in SEMA's case. Yeah. When at tr SEMA's trial, the judge told the jury there is no direct evidence of theft. There was no evidence of theft. And that was the case with all these postmasters that were investigated. No one could find any evidence so of them taking wrong, any what money. What went wrong in Seema's case the first time round? Were, were the jury just deluded? Um, did the judge make a bad call? It's this issue of disclosure. As Seema said, mm. the, the post office were being asked by Seema's defence team to give them information about the computer system that would allow them to examine it properly. Right. And they dragged their heels, they retained the information. And this has been echoed and reverberates through almost every single situation right up to the High Court case. The post office have the money and they have the information and they are only going to get it, let it out if it's dragged screaming from them. And so in Seema's case, where she was dealing... You know, she had a computer Ooh. expert, Professor Charles McLaughlin, very august yep. professional, working for her, trying to... And, and, and the complaints went right up to the first day of the trial... The post office have not given us the information we need to check out this computer system. And therefore, the judge was able to say, well, we think the computer system was working fine. You have to make a decision based on this inference. And then the judge jails a pregnant woman. Well, that I, I will never understand. Seema was never any threat to the public. <laughs> um, I want to ask Seema about, you know, how she's doing now. But can you give me a sense of the scale of human damage that was experienced as a result of what happened? Well, Seema is a, a very strong woman and, and she has got through this. I don't know how she's got through this, but I, I've spoken to other people who have lain for weeks in darkened rooms, unable to go out, unable to face the public. Because don't forget, some postmasters are very yeah. public. They're very visible within their communities. They mm. take on the job because they want to serve and they want to help people. So when this veil of shame and suspicion falls upon them, they're removed from their jobs, they're suspended and then sacked and then charged with criminal offences, it happens in a very, very public, very, very visible way. And these people just want to help. They just wanted to serve. And suddenly... They, they are the centre of attention for all the wrong reasons. And coping with that, especially when you're told that this is your fault, your mistake, mm. it, it, it really brought some people to their knees. And, and we know that some people have committed suicide as a result of this. Some people are still suffering to the extent that they're on medication because of what happened to them 20 years ago. And, and, and it's through the exoneration that they're starting to begin to rebuild their lives. Mm. But so many of them were never even in a position to ask for help. They've suffered in silence and isolation for years. It's broken lives. It's bro I spoke to one guy who'd had his conviction quashed a couple of, couple of months ago. And I said, so now what? And he said, well, when I was convicted, my father disowned me. I haven't spoken to him since. And is it over now for all of the victims? You've got you answer no, that, Seema. No, it's not. <laughs> we still have to prove ourselves. We still have to prove ourselves. It's still going on. Like, it's just like all these, we hear all these big, big action words and everything. You know, the words and everything. It's not just the words. We need action now, so... And so what do, you, what do you need? I mean, do you, do you have a legal team working on this? Yes, I have a very good legal team representing... And are you appealing, or what, what exactly is the process? It's still going on, as Mark mentioned. Like, you know, we still have to prove ourselves, like, after having the conviction overturned as well. Yeah, so, we so have... are you pursuing them for damages? Is that... That's the, process, that's the process going on at mm. the moment, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's... have you received any compensation? Will I say compensation? I got some, but like mm. not not the compensation. No, the, as I mentioned, it's just like a fight. It's still going on. They're still yeah. dragging it. It's, it was twenty third of April. So have, well, the, have, the, have the post office changed their attitude now, mm. given the fact that they've been so? <laughs> they, they say that they on. have, and 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 I mean the, the point is, Seema's conviction was quashed on the twenty third of April. This really? she was convicted. Uh, on, in, 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 in November 2010. Yeah. So she had to wait 11 years for justice. She received an interim compensation payment, which the government underwrote because the post yeah. office is basically a busted flush. It can no longer trade as a going concern with all these compensation payments hanging over them. Mm. But still, 
no one has received full and fair compensation for what has happened to them. Okay. We've got a historical shortfall scheme that was set up last year, which uh, Alistair Carmichael MP raised some serious questions about in the House earlier this week. You've got the announcement of compensation that will be made available to people like Seema, um, but she still has to go through a negotiation process sure. to actually get that full and final figure out of the post office. Now, Seema deserves millions of pounds. There are 72 people whose convictions have been overturned. They deserve millions of pounds in compensation. They are now at the beginning of a negotiation process whereby the government and the post office will seek to get the least possible money paid to them. Mm. They just want what's fair. It could be something that ends up in the middle, but the government are relying on wearing people down so That's that it. eventually they accept and their offer and walk take away. Years? What do you oh, think? I, sincere, I sincerely hope. It. Well, see, if, the, if, if the negotiation doesn't work, then it goes to litigation, That's and it. that could take years. That could take years. Yeah. And so tell me now about your health. How are you feeling? I'm not a criminal anymore. I'm not a convicted yeah. criminal anymore. Feeling definitely feeling much better. Mm. Much better, have, you know, feeling I can just go out and, you know... I hold your head hold, high. Hold my head high, like, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't mad. Yeah. I wasn't mad fighting for so many years. I, was, I, was, I wasn't lying, I was telling the truth. You know, it, it's, it's definitely it does make a difference in our life, but it makes you think as well, is this the world we're living in? Yeah. We, because we're getting penalised for telling the truth. Yeah. Here, like, you know, like, because i got two young kids as well, and we tell the kids, oh, you know, if we, when you tell me the truth, you know, I won't... You know, let's like you know, let's sit down and talk. Tell me the truth. What happened here? When we tell them the truth, we were telling, we were screaming, and yeah. we getting penalised for telling the truth. Basically, yeah. that's what how I feel. Yeah. So still, definitely feel still. I don't know. The pain will ever go away. No, and um, you won't get those years back. The years no, of anxiety. No, definitely won't. No. Has it affected your health at all? I mean, mental or both, physical? Yeah. Of course, yeah, both ways. Really? What, so what about your mental health, for example? I wasn't like, you know, I was so ashamed. I wasn't even going out. Really? I wasn't going out. Uh, my kids uh, haven't attended. Uh, I, we didn't celebrate the birthdays or anything. Mm. What if, you know, I was thinking, you know... Like, what will people think? People will think, they come and say, oh, my God, OK, so he's Seema's son. And you know, for my eldest son, when I used to take him to cricket, I used to park my car that way so, you know, I can see the match but nobody else can see me. That kind of things, they can never come, that time can never be turned, come back. We didn't have any family time going out for walks or anything, nothing, nothing like that at all. And to spend some of your pregnancy in jail as well. What were the conditions like inside? Oh, my God, I was so scared, you know. It was just like I was worried, what if I get, con get contaminated with something or, like, yeah. because there were, like, a blood and all that. Oh. It was just, it was terrible. Yeah. I was so worried about my baby health, you know, if something happened. And you gave birth after you came out of yes. prison, is that right? yeah. And what about your physical health? Yeah, I gave birth with a tag on. That's not the kind of bracelet you want, is it? No, it's just... Not, not... No. Not, not a good thing at all. And, and what about your physical health? I mean, has it taken its toll on you? Yes, definitely. I was, <laughs> I was, I was, I was size 12, but now it's just like, it's just like... <laughs> and no, definitely, just, I'm, I'm, I don't want to go out and all that. I'm, for all those years and everything, my, mm. like, I, I forgot, I'm not going out for walk and everything, mm. I didn't, like, just drained myself out. Mm. So it's kind of, it, it isolated it's you and now you my you're... health issues as well mm. and, you know, with the arthritis and everything. It's just mm. like, all oh, like, everything adds up. Yeah. And, and how about your husband? I mean, he must be a hero to you. Of course, yeah. Definitely. That's the reason, like, we are, we are here today. Yeah. You know, like, it was his courage that he brought Nick in. And if you yeah. were, like, you know, sitting around and say, oh, my God, you know, like, we are the victim. Yeah. Then that's it. We would have been victim then. Well, uh, it's a shocking story. Yeah. And I'm so glad that you've been acquitted and that, uh, you know, justice was done. But I also hope that you get your compensation, which is richly deserved because it will, it will pay you back for, 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 for what you've been through and also allow you to get on with your life and move forward. Yeah, That's definitely. what you want, isn't it? For all those you want people... this to be over. No more lawyer emails, no more phone calls. <laughs> Right? <laughs> True. Sometimes, you know, like, yeah. forget, OK, I'm not going to see my email now. But, like, you know, it's just, like, for all those people, for all those people, there are so many of us, like, we've been fighting for such a long time. We want, like, a life back for everybody. The great post office scandal is out now. Here it is. It's a weighty tome, but it's just dripping in uh, laudatory quotes. Ian Hislop says, an extraordinary journalistic expose of a huge miscarriage of justice. The great post office scandal is by Nick Wallace. The fight to expose a multi-million pound IT disaster which put innocent people 
in jail. Uh, my thanks to uh, both of you for uh, a really Pleasure. important story, and thank you so much for thanks, coming man. in.